Greetings, CSD. Welcome to Words with Dr. Whitaker. I am thrilled that this is a closeout of October, and there are many, many awareness opportunities and celebration opportunities in the month of October, but one that is key is Fire Prevention Month. So I am pleased to have on the podcast for the month of October, none other than Chief Washington. And so Chief Washington, tell the Decatur community what you are the chief of. Yes, I am the chief of the fire department. Oh, wow. So what what type of work do you do? Well, I do a lot of work. I get to develop and implement fire safety plans for the community, uh, as well as make sure that the firefighters are safe and are able to respond to you when you need an emergency. Oh, I, I would say the Decatur community, we know that the response times and the way in which we have partnered in the months of October, the months of September, definitely has been an increase. But at the same time, it's been so valuable. So I want to publicly first just say thank you. Thank you for what you do every day. And thank you for the partnership that we have had, definitely, as we've had a bit of an uptick here. Yes, yes. No, thank you. Um, Thank you for being so open and also so welcoming because, you know, anything that we bring to Decatur Schools, uh, you always say yes. (laughs) So that is awesome. I appreciate your partnership, too. Well, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. And so this is October. We're just about at the end. So we are in the midst of fire prevention. And this is the month we recognize fire prevention. But uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a little bit. As I do each time here on the podcast, we talk about our strategic plan, which is all in Decatur. So I'm going to revisit this just like I do in all other opportunities, is that to let you know, our strategic plan, all indicator, has four strategic accelerators. And back in early 2023, the strategic plan was revealed. And when that strategic plan was revealed, it said we needed to focus on four things. Number one, we have to focus on student success in all areas. That is vital. That is ultimately our mission. Number two, it is key that we build a sustaining and engaging, inclusive culture for our our students and our staff. And in order to do that, we must have a partnership with the fire department, and all of our uh, law enforcement agencies and emergency agencies so that we are building that inclusive and engaging culture so that all of our students and all of our staff know that they are safe. Another key piece to this strategic plan is to make sure that we do have high-quality staff members And those staff members have access to professional learning that sometimes is provided by the fire department. So you'll get to hear a little bit how we are building and we're cultivating our educators and all of our staff through partnerships such as the fire department. Because we want you here in the city schools of Decatur to be with us from your higher to your retirement. And then finally, the last strategic accelerator is this one that speaks to organizational effectiveness and excellence. And that ensures that we as a school system have the partnerships in place so that all of the other strategic accelerators can be lived out. So as I think about this strategic plan, I think about what we are all in for all children, where all will mean all, the fire department is key for that. So 
So we're going to talk a little bit more about those different opportunities we have to engage. So safety of our students and our staff, it's the top priority for me as the superintendent of the city schools of Decatur. And we know the last couple of months, there has definitely been an impact on safety, on security. And we talk quite often. We, yes, we do. So you're a critical partner for us. So please highlight some of the ways that we do partner in a preventative, proactive stance. Yes, thank you so much. So, um, right, our kids are key, and we have to make sure that we keep them safe. And I think that our partnership, like you said, is so critical and it's so impactful as we look back and look at what happens in Decatur. Mm -hmm. So we partner on a lot of things. You know, yes, uh, October is Fire Prevention Month, but we like to say we we bring awareness all year round. All and, year. And I'm going to talk about some of the programs that we actually um, have partner on. Mm -hmm. So we have a Narcan program um, that we partner with you all on. We trained all your bus drivers. Um, we supplied you with Narcan. Um, we have uh, a Stop the Bleed program where we train all of the teachers on how to uh, kind of uh, uh, conduct a quick survey and, you know, stop bleeding for a little while until we can get there. Now, yes. you're right. Our response time is quick. Yes. So we're going to get there quick. But we wanted you all to have the tools in your tool belt to make sure that you can help us out and prolong and save lives. So that Stop the Bleed program is very, very critical. You know what, Chief? We, as a school system, in the beginning of the year, there are a lot of different trainings that all staff have to participate in. And they're virtual, asynchronous, meaning that it's a virtual engagement, the teachers and the bus drivers, everyone has to engage in this training. And I'm often asked, well, how many times do I have to do this first aid training? How many times are we going to really need to know how to use an EpiPen? How many times... And I will tell you, over these last couple of months, there have been some teachers that have said to me, I know we hate doing all of that virtual training, but it did make a difference. Yes. yes. It made a difference. So I love that not only do we have the foundational training that all staff have to engage in, and it's really how we reduce, reduce our liability, risk management, mitigation, all of those pieces. But then for you to come in as a fire department to then layer on the demonstration, making it hands on for our staff. So I just want to once again say thank you. Um, I tell people often, I'm a superintendent. I can't do everything. <laughs> but know that that partnership between the other agencies is key. So I didn't mean to stop you, but no, when no, no, I no. went, but when you were sharing, I thought explicitly, like, I know I've had this conversation in the last couple of days as I've been in schools yes. and they, they said, yes, you are 100% right. Yes. That's a lot of training, but at the same time, it makes a lot, it, it helps. Yes, it, it helps. It does. You know, I always tell people practice um, prepares you and, Sometimes when we don't have events and it's good, I, I hope we never have an event. Right. But if we have an event, we want to be prepared and we want to be ready. Mm -hmm. And that practice every year just kind of reiterates and reminds us exactly what we're supposed to do. Because a lot of times when there is an incident or emergency, you know, some people will go in the panic mood mode and not remember everything that they were taught, especially if we wait every two years or every three years to do this. So that's why we like to do it every year. So we kind of remind the teachers, remind the community of exactly how they should respond because practice makes perfect. So, yes. So, so yes. So, so yes. So we do the first day. We also do CPR training, you know, 
all the buildings, all your buildings have that AED and yes. we need to know how to work it. And I know that when you pull it out, it has some directions, but still, if you don't have some training kind of reminder of exactly what you're supposed to do, then you lose that skill. And we want to make sure that if there's ever a need in any of our schools, that our teachers and administrators are prepared to handle that emergency. Yes, uh, I saw a couple pictures most recently where we were working with all of our athletic coaches. Mm -hmm. Because when you think about it, you know, our teams are playing early in the morning before Mm -hmm. school they're practicing. And then late in the evening when not, you know, not everyone's there. Right. And so to make sure that they know exactly what to do and as we are waiting for that response is key. So once again, it's another great partnership, um, not only for the staff that are there, but for our lay coaches, for our athletic uh, facilitators. It's key. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So, Well, we're really, really excited because, you know, we have partner and some fun things also, but also being able to uh, teach uh, uh, fire safety awareness. You know, I always tell people in Decatur, I'm living the dream as a fire chief because we have tremendously reduced our risk because of the awareness. And a lot of that has to do with what we're doing in the school system. So we had a um, a tree hugger program and uh, we got artwork from your your students mm-hmm. and we picked a winner and we put that on the tree on a T-shirt. And the uh, commissioners, the Decatur commissioners, were able to highlight the student that won the artwork. Mm -hmm. And also we had T-shirts made. So, again, and at that point we were able to come into school and remind them of all those fire safety tips that they need to be aware of to ensure that they are safe in their homes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Fire prevention and fire safety, it's, it's invaluable. It's invaluable. It's invaluable that we conduct the drills. Yes. Like we do. Yeah, we do those all the time. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh, indicator. We don't check that block. We actually do those drills. So Exactly. Yes. And we're communicating with our families when those drills are conducted so that they are aware that the students did go outside. And yes, it was a drill, but we must do those things. And it's required so that we can have emergency plans in place, not just so it's on the shelf, but so that our students and our administrators know what to do when an emergency happens. And some upcoming trainings that we kind of thought about and some things I haven't really talked to you about. Oh, but, you know, I love it. I love it. Yes, <laughs> yes. But we received the fire extinguisher trainer um, through the federal government, and it's a virtual trainer, mm-hmm. and it really teaches people how to use a fire extinguisher. Yes. And we're really, we would like to get with your, your staff and set up a time where we can come in and not just teach the administrators and the teachers, but also the students, mm-hmm. because, you know, some of them are old enough to stay home by themselves. And, yes, yes. We, what we tell people that the first thing you need to do is get out, um, mm-hmm. but there may be some uh, – things that prevent them from getting out right away, and they may have to pull that fire extinguisher out. So we want to teach them how to properly use the fire extinguisher and make sure that you have a fire extinguisher in your your home that actually works. Oh, I love it. So check, check. You know that (laughs) collaboration is going to be in place. So uh, students, get ready. It sounds like it would definitely happen at the high school and potentially the middle school Mm -hmm. based upon the age of the students and the laws for how old you must be in order to be at home alone. But still, it's something that we want all, truly to mean all, that our staff and our students are safe. And so those are the ways we can definitely do that. And that partnership will be key. All right. Well, is there anything else you want to share? Uh, You have the opportunity to tell not only the city schools of the Decatur, but all of Decatur, any, anything else? Yeah. So of course it's fire prevention month. So I have to share some fire safety tips. Please Um, do. Please do. Please do. So I would like to say that everyone should have a working smoke alarm in your home. 
I know that you sometimes it gets on your nerves when you're cooking. If you're a cooker like me and always set it off, I do understand that you take that battery out sometimes. But you need to be sure that you have a working smoke alarm in your home because you cannot hear fire. So if you're sleeping, the only thing that's going to wake you up or alarm you to make you make sure that you get out of the house um, quickly is that smoke alarm. So please have that smoke alarm in your home, a working one. And also you want to have a practice escape route. You want to find a safe place that you will meet all of your family members outside of the home. Because if there's a fire, you don't want to go look for everyone. Everyone should know exactly where to meet a safe place outside of the home. So you should practice that even annually as you do everything else. So yes, so if we keep doing this and we can keep making uh, Decatur greater and greater and greater, and I can continue to li- live that dream that fire, fire chiefs want all over the world is reducing our risk in the community. Well, thank you so much, Chief Washington, for joining us today. This has been a pleasure. When I think about October has many recognitions. I do see your badge for a breast cancer yes. awareness. We understand that it's fire prevention month. There are anti-bullying. So many yes. different things are recognized in this month. But to have this conversation with you has been truly a pleasure. I thank you for your partnership. I thank you for what you do every day not only for the city schools of Decatur, but for all of Decatur to keep Decatur safe. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in. We've covered a lot of information today. And to all of city schools of Decatur, thank you so much for tuning in to Words with Dr. Whitaker. Have a wonderful month of November. We'll see who we have next. Bye-bye.